Lucy Arnaz with your tropical trip. Yes, that young man who in such a short time has become a sensational star in nightclubs and theaters and on records, our Latin American ambassador of goodwill and great music of all the Americas, Dick Arnaz. Gracias, señores y señoras, y bienvenidos a nuestro programa de la radio. Espero que les guste. Y quiero felicitarlos, los quiero felicitar a todos por el Christmas, los quiero felicitar a todos por el 4th of July, los quiero felicitar a todos por el Memorial Day, y los quiero felicitar a todos por hoy. Translation, Happy Easter. <risa> Now, I get it aside, ladies and gentlemen. It's really a great pleasure to agree again. Again, again, what is that? Again, bring you some music, have you meet some nice people, and to fly somebody in a tropical trip south of the border. Three guests are waiting for our musical compass to spin around to all those great cities of Latin America. Managua, Quito, Buenos Aires, San Salvador, Guadalajara, Guadalajara, Guadalajara! <laughs> all right, uh, quiet. We're not going there today. The compa has stopped spinning, and we're going, we're going, ladies and gentlemen, to Santiago de Chile. Win a wonderful trip to Santiago de Chile. Yes, Desi, the Braniff International Airways will make arrangements for our winner to fly to Santiago, Chile. Braniff's famed El Conquistador offers DC-6 Deluxe Sleeper service to Latin America, and our winner will stay at the famous Crelon Hotel as guest of Pedro Kuppenheim, where you can enjoy the Crelon's excellent French cuisine. <laughs> you know, it sounds to me like a very exciting trip. Yes. Well, what part of South America is Kuppenheim from, you know? <laughs> Johnny, you know, it's very easy to get excited about chili. Oh, uh, just what I was thinking about last night, Desi. I sat on the porch with my girl. I got excited. She got chili. <laughs> Johnny, I can see that you're doing the wrong kind of homework at night school. <laughs> Maybe I should give you a lesson in geography. All right. First of all, you should know that in Santiago, Chile, Tain Chile no more. Really? Yes, sir. That's the truth. And I got a song right here to prove it. Listen. In Santiago, Chile, Tain Chile at all. Play a senorita, a sociable call. Her folks are very friendly. They stick around close from your first how do you do to your last adios. Santiago Chile, her hand touches yours, sets your heart a burning. The temperature soars, so take a friendly warning. Pull down the flame unless you want the lady to take your name. The Chilean moon, the Chilean sigh. Your heart goes up like fireworks, the fourth of July. The night may be cool, but if you're not fool, then Chile isn't Chile as a rule. You whisper your te quiero, and soon she will stay. If you're the caballero, she'll take her mate. In case you are selected, you lucky señor, in Santiago, Chile, then Chile no more. Chilean sigh, your heart goes up like fireworks the 4th of July. The night may be cool, but if you're not fool, then Chile isn't Chile as a rule. You whisper your te quiero and soon she will stay. If you're the caballero, you take for a mate. In case you are selected, you lucky senor in Santiago, Chile, then Chile no more. Then Chile at all. Yes, 
me. That was a South American anti-frost song, if ever I've heard one. <laughs> but now we're ready for our first guest. She's a lady from Inglewood, California. Meet Mrs. Lucy E. Rankin. Hello, Mrs. Rankin. How are you? Hello, Mr. Arnaz. Oh, fine. Listen, uh, Johnny says you live in Inglewood. Are you a native Californian? Oh, no. I was born in Canary Islands. Really? The, way down the equator? You were really born in the Canary Islands? Yes, I was. Oh. And that's my husband's favorite joke. He says I got the legs to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen now. Your husband shouldn't joke about you being born in the Canary Islands. He shouldn't do that. Tell me, did your mother raise you in Pablum or Bercy? <laughs> Just trying to make a little joke. <laughs> I didn't want it to be so little. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I wish you would explain. How, how come you were born in the Canary Islands? My mother was down there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good arrangement. <laughs> Convenient for both of you. <laughs> no, what I really want to know is this. What was your mother doing in the Canary Islands? Well, my father was a mining engineer in South Africa. Uh-huh. I wonder what Einstein is doing today. <laughs> Look, Mrs. Rankin, let me ask you this question. Uh, did your mother meet your father in the Canary Islands or in South Africa? Oh, no. They met Neely, Nevada. <laughs> in Neely, Nevada, huh? Now I know why Cougar stays in South America. <laughs> Listen, let, let's get a clean start. The Canary Islands belong to Spain. Is that right? Yes, that's right. All right. Now, does that mean that you are a Spanish citizen? Well, according to the law of Canary Islands, the doctor wanted to register me as Spanish, and mother wanted me registered as American. I see. Well, uh, what, what did they do? Well, on the birth certificate, it says miscellaneous. <laughs> You know, that's a cute name for a baby girl. <laughs> what about the school? Did, did they teach you Spanish or English in the Canary Islands? Oh, I went to school in Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let, let's not start this all over again. I got, two, I got two questions for you. All you got to do is answer one of them correctly and you'll be able to come back later on in the program to try for the tropical trip to the Canary... I mean, to the... <laughs> to Santiago to Chile. All right, here's your first question. Chile is a long, skinny country with many types of climate. For example, along the coast, you would say how mild it is. On the eastern border, you would say how cold it is. And in the north, you would be sure to say... How dry I am! Yeah! All right, you qualify for the trip. You qualify already to come back and try for the trip. If you answer the next question correctly, you can win yourself a very nice gift. So listen, if you were traveling and someone gave you a mantilla, what would you do? Would you put it on your lap and play it? Would you roll it on a stick and fry it? Would you give it to your mother-in-law to wear it? Or would you take it to a shop and stuff it? What would you do? I don't know what you'd do with it, but I'd wear it. I said <laughs> Yes, Desi, Mrs. Rankin's correct answer to the bonus question wins her a beautiful new Westinghouse electric refrigerator with colder cold control. You can be sure if it's Westinghouse. <laughs> Notable radio event, the stirring drama. Tomorrow night, CBS Lux Radio Theater brings you Seventh Heaven with the original stars of the motion picture, Janet Gaynor and Charles Farrell. Once more, you can live through this wonderful wartime romance with Chico, the Paris street cleaner, and Diane, the girl he rescued. Charles Farrell and Janet Gaynor will come from retirement to appear in this special Lux Radio Theater play. Be listening tomorrow night when on most of these same CBS stations, the Lux Radio Theater presents Seventh Heaven. <laughs> Now, Desi, here's our next guest for that big trip to Santiago de Chile. Meet Mr. William Elliott, a retired mailman. Hello, Mr. Elliott. Oh, nice. So you're a retired mailman, eh? Well, right. shake hands with a retreaded musician. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been retired? I've been on a pension about a year and a half, and previous to that, I carried letters for over 38 years. Ah, oh, 
You forgot to drop them in the mailbox, huh? <laughs> you know, but being a mailman isn't all just work, is it? Then you must have had some fun peeking at the postcards, huh? Oh, Mr. Arnold, I never did that. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> you mean to tell me you were a mailman for 38 years and you never look at the postcards? How come? Well, they're all such dull reading. <laughs> what do you expect on a postcard? Forever Amber? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, are you married, Mr. Elliot? Oh, yes, very much. For 41 years. 41 years. See, almost half a century. Are you telling me? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, uh, Mr. Mailman, how did you meet your wife? Playing post office? <laughs> now, you've been married for 40 years, eh? Have you had any, uh, special deliveries? Oh, thousands of them. Thousands of them? <laughs> no wonder you retire. <laughs> so, the special deliveries I'm talking about, you don't put them in your mail pouch and bring them, you lay them on your shoulder and burp them. <laughs> Oh, you mean kids. That right. Oh, we got five of them. Five kids? <laughs> oh, gee, that's a nice family. Do they look like you? Oh, no, they take after getting their good looks in the wife. Ah, well, you might be retired from the post office, but you still know how to carry the mail. <laughs> in, listen, tell me something. In, in 38 years as a postman, how much walking would you say you did? Well, I figured out one day that I've walked about 55,000 miles or twice around the world and... Delivered about 8 million pieces of mail, which weighs about 315 tons and wore out about 114 pairs of shoes. Wow. How many boxes of corn plasters? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, what's the, what's the biggest problem a mailman has? Oh, there's a lot of things that annoy the mailman, but I think the dogs are the worst. They growl and uh, bite you once in a while. <laughs> and they're kind of a pain in the neck. <laughs> in the neck? <laughs> <laughs> You know what they say, uh, a dog is a man's best friend, but who wants his best friend attached to the seat of his pants? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let's talk about our big trip to Santiago de Chile. What would you do if you were there? Well, I think I'd look up some old-time carriers and swap stories with them. Well, that's wonderful, and if you hear any good ones, mail them to me, will you? Okay. Don't forget to put a stamp on it. Here's your first question. Today is Easter. So I will tell you about the romance of Jose and Josefina Rabbit, who live in the Argentine Pampas. Jose's heart went hoppity hop over Josefina, but she was very coy, and she would not promise to marry him. But one night, Jose took her to a nightclub, the carrot ball, and told her to dance the bunny hop. They were playing this song. So Josefina put her ear next to his and whispered, Jose, you are the one for me. And right now, what did you whisper? Here it is. I surrender, dear. I surrender, dear! Yeah. 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 All right. You qualify already. Here's the second question. Jose and Josefina Rabbit were married. And before you could say Peter Rabbit, they had a house full of bunnies. 49, to be exact. <laughs> Finally, Josefina said, I love my children, but what about the mink coat, the Cadillac, and the laundromat you promised me? And Jose Rabbit answered, I'm afraid you misunderstood, dear. When we got married, you knew that... I think that's what I had to tell my wife when I first married her. I can't give you anything but love, <laughs> Mr. Elliot has won this wonderful Polaroid Land camera, the camera that gives you pictures a minute after you snap them, complete with flash unit, all from Spiegel Incorporated, the famous mail order house whose big $1 catalog is now available at Chicago 9. <laughs> Now I think it is time to tell the people about our All-American Special. Yeah, I know, Desi, but I'd like to say something first. Well, later on, Johnny. Right now it's time for the All-American Special. Uh, sure, but before that, I'd like to say that Mr. Elliot here, uh, the retired postman, was certainly good at answering those questions. Yes, sir. In fact, Desi, you and I, as we'd say in Spanish, uh, Mr. Elliot, contestar correctamento. <laughs> as you and I say in Spanish... <laughs> 
<laughs> Contestar correctamente. Your pronunciation is impossible, Johnny. What's wrong with it, Desi? The R's, the R's. In Spanish, they must roll off your tongue. Listen to me. R con R cigarro, R con R barril. Rápido, corner los carros de ferro barril. Well, Johnny. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Where are those uh, peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Well, Desi. Our All American special this week. <laughs> it's a song. That has been whistle and song on the main boulevards of the capitals all over the world. Yes, you can hear it on Fifth Avenue in New York, on the Avenida Rio Branco in Rio de Janeiro, on El Prado in Havana, Cuba, and on the Avenida Bernardo Higgins in Santiago de Chile. So it is certainly no surprise that this song is the top American tune in our honor city this week. Here it is, our all-American special. <laughs> Los pajaritos cantan, del nido se levantan, las brisas del Caribe llevan una canción, la luna coqueteando al sol enamorando, pues hoy es el domingo de la resurrección. Y yo rezaré, ofreceré muy sinceramente gracias a nuestro Señor que me trajo tu amor, pues tú eres el encanto que socolló mi llanto, que me endulzó la vida con tu fe y tu amor. Down the avenue, Fifth Avenue, the photographers will snap us, and you'll find that you're in the Rutherford Review. Say, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bonnet, and of the girl I'm taking to the Easter parade. Oh, come on, honey. Let's take a walk. Desi, that song is really Easter everywhere. But now we're getting very close to the big question, so here's your final guest. Meet Mrs. Myrna K. Smith. Hello, Mrs. Smith. Gee, that's a very, very nice Easter outfit you have on. It is so chic, so soigné, so décolleté. Thank you, Mr. Arnaz. You're welcome. But tell me something, what did I say? I don't know, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, that's a very pretty dress. I'm glad you like it. You know, this, these new styles are, are very, very nice. For Easter, I bought my wife Lucille a new dress with big buttons all the way down the back. I'm sure she like it. As soon as she learns how to sit sideways. <laughs> what do you do, Mrs. Smith? I work for the Los Angeles Police Department. The police department? <laughs> Uh, maybe you can help me out. You know, I got a, a, a parking ticket the other day. <laughs> can you tell me what's the right thing to say to the judge? Well, can you tell me the right thing to say when you ask the jackpot question? <laughs> Crime does not pay. <laughs> what's your work with the police department? I'm a, a Kirk typist. I see. It, it's just a small job. I just started. Well, that's the only way, you know. Start at the bottom. I started at the bottom in the orchestra business. I, I began by polishing the horns. Then I got the job of putting new reeds in the clarinets. And finally, I got promoted to putting new tubes in the tubas. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll be putting sax in the saxophones. <laughs> No cracks from the orchestra, please. Tell, tell me, where did you, where, where did you meet uh, your husband? Well, he was with the Los Angeles Police Department, too. He's a sergeant. I see. Well, where did you meet him? 
Did he work? Uh... Well, I used to work across the street from uh, the station in a bank. Ah. He used to come in and cash his check, and he kept pestering me for a date. Even I now, I kid him about how he used to chase after me. Ah, uh-huh. well, sure. He chased after you, you know. <laughs> a girl never chases a man, you know. Just like a mouse trap never chases a mouse either. <laughs> You come here to try for the big trip to, to Santiago de Chile, so I got two questions for you. Here's your first one. Every country has a special type of music and its own native composer. So if a certain composer had been born in South America instead of Vienna, we might be hearing this. Who was the name of the composer? Uh, that's Blue Diamond by um, Strauss. Strauss, that's right. Desiderius Strauss. Now, uh, every country has its own literature and its traditional heroes. Don Quixote is certainly one of the most famous heroes in all Spanish literature. So tell me this. Did Don Quixote, in one of his adventures, charge up San Juan Hill? Did he charge in the live brigade? Did he charge a windmill? Or did he charge his battery? It must have been a windmill. A windmill, that's right! Curtis Smith has won a beautiful console model television set featuring Crosley's famous family theater screen and full room-wide angle vision. Thank you very much. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, there is much more to a good song than just words and music. The spirit of a people, their dreams, their hopes, their times of joy and sorrow, can sometimes be experienced in one simple melody. Such is the song that we would like to play for you now. It is a song of the gypsies of Spain, and I know that in it you will find the soul of those people. So here it is, Lamento Gitano, the gypsies lament. That was a beautiful song. 
Now we're ready for the big question, the question that decides who will win that holiday in Latin America. The tropical trip to Santiago de Chile. Our guests who qualified are Mrs. Lucy Rankin, Mr. William Elliott, Mrs. Myrna Smith. They're waiting for the question, Desi. Thank you, Johnny, and sincere good wishes to each one of you. I wish you could all win. I'm going to ask one question just one time. You will have ten seconds to write your answer. If you're not sure of the correct answer, at least make a guess. And remember, the first person who comes closest to the correct answer will be the winner. Are you ready? All right. Listen very carefully. Here's the big question. What is the distance in air miles from San Francisco to Santiago, Chile? You have ten seconds. Take a guess. Five seconds are up. The time is up, and now we're collecting the cars in the order in which our guests answer. The question was, what is the distance in air miles from San Francisco to Santiago, Chile? And here are the answers from our guests. Mrs. Myrna Smith, 6,000. Miss Lucy Rankin, 5,250. Mr. William Elliott, 2,200. The distance is 5,960 miles. The winner who said 6,000, Miss Marina Smith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, you have won our tropical trip to Santiago de Chile. How do you feel now, huh? Oh, I'm so excited. Well, wonderful. Tell it, Johnny. Yes, Desi Braniff International Airways will make arrangements for Mrs. Smith to fly to Santiago de Chile. Braniff's famed El Conquistador DC-6 Deluxe Sloper Service connects the great capitals of the Americas. Upon arrival, she'll stay at the famous Crelan Hotel as guest of Pedro Copenheim, where she can enjoy the Crelan's excellent French cuisine. <laughs> yes, sir. Congratulations again, Miss Smith. And to our other two guests, Miss Lucy Rankin and Mr. William Elliott, I want you to be my dinner guest at the Billmore Ball, where the boys and I are currently playing. So come down any night to the ball, bring someone with you to the ball, and we'll have a nice fiesta down at the ball. Will you do that? Huh? Oh, enjoy yourself! We'll be back next week with more music, more guests, and another exciting tropical trip to somewhere in South America. So for now, I would like to say adios, amigo. Vaya con Dios. Supervision by Martin Ward and Sal Stein was produced for CBS by Sterling Fish. Mary Livingston's much maligned sister, Babe, will fight back against all the mean things said against her on CBS's Jack Benny show tonight. There'll be more fun when lovely Maureen O'Hara joins Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy in a special Easter adventure. The other great CBS Sunday night comedians, Eve Arden, Amos, and Andy and Red Skelton, will also be running along in high gear. While the choral ears and the contented hours, Joe Stafford and Tony Martin will be bringing you special Easter music. Horace Height will be on hand with his original youth opportunity program, so be listening to them all on most of these same CBS stations tonight. Stay tuned now for Dollar a Minute, starring Bill Goodwin, which follows immediately on most of these stations. Johnny Jacobs speaking. This is CBS, where the choral ears are heard every Sunday evening, the Columbia Broadcasting System.